This is Boomer Life on CL 650. And welcome back to the show. This is Boomer Life on CL 650. I'm Joanne Sutton. Joined in studio today with CEO of the Alzheimer's Society of BC, Maria Howard. Also, Kim Evans was with us. She just left. Kim is a caregiver for her husband who's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And we're talking about donating to the society, why it's important, and how your money can actually help. Now, Kim spoke firsthand on that topic after needing and using the services of the Alzheimer's Society of BC. Now, to help address this issue in a lot more detail, we welcome the Manager of Resource Development with the Alzheimer's Society of BC. This is Susan Ray. Susan, thanks for being here. Thank you. Good to be here. So Susan has 15 years experience helping people find meaningful ways of making a difference with the Alzheimer's Society of BC. So Susan, it's really great to be able to speak directly with some of the team members from the society. Can you talk a little bit about what your actual role is as the manager of resource development? What do, what do you actually do? I work with a small group of professional um, staff who are dedicated to working with people to help them find meaningful ways to make a difference. So it could be working with someone um, to make a legacy gift, to make a bequest in their will, like we've heard about from Colin. It could be making a one-time donation in memory of someone special. Uh, So there's lots of ways of making a difference. And my team is building relationships with the community to help people to understand what we do and how important it is and to help them to realize some of their wishes and dreams for how they can make a difference. So Susan, what actually brought you to the Alzheimer's Society? Do you, we ask this of everybody who joins the show, do you have a personal connection to Alzheimer's or dementia? Like many people I do, I am... grew up with um, two really close friends who both um, or they each have a family member, a parent actually, who was diagnosed with young onset dementia. And so I've um, grown alongside them as they've gone through that journey. And so when I started with the um, Alzheimer's Society, I felt very passionate about it. And as I learned more, I was able to help connect my friends with the supports that we have and Um, You know, one of my friends started volunteering with the organization and donates and um, she feels, as I do, very passionate about the organization. When she was, uh, when her mom was diagnosed, her youngest sibling was only 13. So uh, it really just shows how um, the whole family can be impacted by the disease. And so um, I feel really passionate about what we do and what I do as far as helping people to make donations to support others. What a beautiful place to start with helping two very close personal friends. Exactly. Yeah. Now, in your role working with donors and the community, you're very uniquely poised to talk about the importance of giving back and how that money gets to be used. Can you talk a little bit about why giving back is so important and the impact that donations are having? Sure. Um, You know, I think it's best told by some of the people that use our services. And I feel so privileged to have an opportunity to talk to people about um, how they've used our services or how they've benefited from the services that we provide. And so I think that um, those stories really can help to um, demonstrate how important it is. And as you've heard before, we really rely on the generosity of private donations. About 80% of our funding comes from private donations. And so everyone can make such an impact. Um, You know, when we hear things from people, um, for example, of course, we are thanking people when they make their donations. And and we've heard many times where we call to say, thank you so much for your your donation. We've heard, no, thank you. This is how you've helped my family. Um, And we hear that, you know, the organization is a lifeline to... um, to people in the community. Um, They don't feel alone anymore. They're not feeling isolated if they can connect with our services. So, um, you know, it it doesn't take a lot. There's, for example, um, you know, a gift of $10 a month can really make an impact to help us plan for the future. It gives us um, stability for the future. Uh, So it's not, it doesn't take a a lot, but it can have a big impact. So whether it's small or big, 
you know, there's someone here that really wants to talk to you and help you to achieve what you're hoping to do. Well, I think we did establish that every penny matters. Absolutely. And when we were speaking with Colin Ritchie, the lawyer that was on the show um, just a few moments ago, uh, he, he gave us a couple of great examples of how it doesn't have to be uh, a, a, you know, a, a legacy of, you know, your entire worth or your entire estate. It can be a monthly donation like you just mm-hmm. proposed. Well, and I think, as you mentioned too, um, you know, sometimes people don't feel it with, with the, the journey that they're on right now. They have other um, things that they're they're concerned about, financial constraints. And so uh, it could be a, a gift now, but it could be planning for a gift in the future. And um, I think it's really important to be, Um, you know, circumstances change along the way. So you may start out giving one way and then progress into something different. And, and, you know, that's my job is to to meet with people and and to help them to figure out what's best for them. So how easy is it to actually make a donation? Is it just a matter of a phone call and saying, you know, I have an extra $10,000. Do you want it? Absolutely. <laughs> it is. You know, it's you, you can go online um, to www.alzheimerbc.org and make a donation online. We're trying to make that an easier process for people. Uh, you can pick up the phone and call 1-800-667-3742 and ask to speak to someone directly or just give your credit card number over the phone. Um, and we're always happy to meet with people to, to hear those stories of how you know, we're, we're helping them to, um, we, we want to just hear their story and how we can work together. So um, it's, it, it, I do think it's easy. And I think when an organization such as ours is, as it is trusted and respected, it's easy for individuals to get behind that and to feel that their money is going to a worthy place. So another uh, point that Colin raised when we were calling the lawyer, we were just speaking with Colin Ritchie. Uh, he said, people are really concerned about how their money is going to be used. Absolutely. And I think trust is, is in an organization in the mission and the values of the organization and, and being able to um, display that we're um, efficient and effective with with the resources that we have it's so incredibly important do you, but do you get asked that question how is my money going to be used absolutely or can i make it specifically for a program or a service yeah exactly we talk to people about what's important to them so is is it research is it helping people to you know have a to find the causes in a cure or to help provide research for a quality of life now or you know if someone's really interested in helping um, our programs and services whether it be a support group or um, one of our minds in motion programs um, we are absolutely interested to hear what's important and trying to help designate that gift in the right way do you have any examples of of how gifts have been made in the past or yeah um let me think of an example um i worked for um with a family for a very long time um, and met with them many times on a more complex example of a, of a, a legacy gift. And uh, they were very interested in having half of their funds um, support research and half of their, their funds support our programs and services. So we were able to work out something over a couple of meetings that suited them and really was going to be an impact for the organization. Uh, this family... Um, it was, it was it's an important one to me. I um, started working with him about five years ago and it was um, a fellow who was caring for his wife at home and he was able to keep her at home through her entire journey and he learned, you know, how to do all those things that like he didn't cook before and he learned how to, to do the laundry and the ironing. And do the laundry and <laughs> all even, the household chores. All, even the more things that you don't talk about, like how does someone um, go to the bathroom and, and help uh, you know, his wife to, to do that. And so he was very open with me about those challenges. And, and so we, the many challenges he had, we had such a, a bond that um, I sort of lived with them through that, that process of making a donation. And after his wife passed, we continued to, um, to meet and he was able to honor her memory through this legacy gift and he's now since passed away and his children are continuing the relationship with us with so. yourself isn't that amazing so mm-hmm. when you say you lived with them through that journey you really held their hand and embraced them as a family absolutely it, it becomes personal i can hear that from your story Susan, is there anything else that you wanted to share with us today about uh, planned giving, uh, making donations to the Alzheimer's Society and why it's so important? 
Well, I, I would just say personally, I have been a monthly donor for five years to the Alzheimer's Society. That's how important it is to me. And um, I really encourage others to to think about what's important to talk to us. Uh, it's the time of year where I know that you're probably thinking about how you'd like to give back and maybe make, make a gift to um, the Alzheimer's Society. So I, I ask you to pick up the phone and join us and help others. So with Christmas on the horizon, is this a good time of year to donate, ladies? Absolutely. I, I mean, I think any time of year is a good time to donate, but Christmas is certainly a time when we stop and think about um, what's important to us and why and, and how we can continue to make a difference. And I know that, um, as Susan shared, many people um, have participated in our services and and we've been there to help them through this tough journey. And so uh, we appreciate them giving uh, giving back to us so we can take that support and give it to another family who will need that too. So I will encourage you as a listener, if you have any questions about today's show or possibly making a donation to the Alzheimer's Society of BC, uh, please phone the society. Uh, Susan, you can either talk to them directly or some member of your team. Absolutely. We'd be happy to. And and, um, we look forward to chatting with you. And more information, of course, is available online, alzheimerbc.org. Thanks to you for sharing with us today, Susan. Thank you. Thanks to all of our guests today, uh, talking about why your donation truly matters to the Alzheimer's Society of BC. CEO Maria Howard was here, Susan Ray, Manager of Resource Development. Kim Evans, sharing her very personal story uh, about her husband, Jack, uh, was speaking with us today about making a donation and how she personally has benefited from the programs and services of the Alzheimer's Society. And of course, to our independent financial planner and lawyer, Colin Ritchie, who passed along some great advice on how to make donations through our wills and through insurance policies and uh, get some tax benefits as well. For any questions you might have, once again, please phone or visit the website. I'm Joanne Sutton. Just want to say thank you very much for joining us today on Boomer Life on CL 650.